finally get to dip a toe in the Caspian. We haven't found uh, a beach yet, but it's lovely and warm. Our first proper dinner out in Kazakhstan. It's our first dinner in Kazakhstan. This is our friend Joseph. Nice we give him the okay. <laughs> and this is our horse. Uh, it's yeah. our first Kazakh horse steak. And it's delicious. We um, caught it on the way from the port. <laughs> <laughs> there are camels and horses roaming the road, but it's horse and it's very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I'm having a, a kabob, a land kebab. And um, it's very, all very civilized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very lovely little restaurant. So we've driven about 300 kilometers east of Aktau. Uh, we've just visited Shobhanatha Mosque. We just stopped off at this little spot for a nice uh, nice bit of lunch. And then we're off to Beketata in a bit. Careful now, sweetie. I think I could survive that fall. I would just tumble. I'd, I'd just wrap myself up like a beetle, like a desert beetle, and I'd tumble, and then I'd shake it off. I don't think so. <laughs> so here we are on the way down to Beckett at the mosque. It's a pilgrimage site here in Mangostau, the region. And you can see it just, just down there. I reckon it's going to take a minute to get there. Our mighty pilgrimage is uh, about halfway through as we continue our epic walk in the desert. It's lucky it's not 50 degrees out here. Strasvita! Strasvitsa. Strasvitsa. These two friendly Russians. <laughs> we have arrived. We just, when we return, we must go up there. Very peaceful indeed. Quite small inside, little cave. Very beautiful. The pilgrim's table. Bon appetit. Just, uh, just sort of prayer. What have you got there? <laughs> Sweet, just give it a spin. Oh, look at your little eye. I'm pleased to say that previously a border was closed in Uzbekistan, which would have caused us to do a 2,800 kilometer round trip. That's no longer the case. We believe it's now open and we're getting the train into Uzbekistan directly. So we have about 600 kilometers till we get to Uzbekistan. And then we'll have <laughs> Savannah. That's our carriage. We are right at the back of the train. So this is a second class sleeping carriage. Let's uh, see what uh, it looks like. So yesterday we met a lady from Russia who was born here as a Kazakh, but Russian. And she said, oh, be careful, it's dangerous here. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she said, uh, because of the fascists. I'm like, well, what do you mean the fascists? And she's like, well, they don't like us here because we're in, like, there's 12% Russians in Kazakhstan and the rest are, are natural Kazakhs and there's a lot of racism towards them. So clearly it's an issue in the, in the Russian diaspora around the world that they are, their grandparents are placed here under, under the Soviets and now they live here and they, they struggle with being persecuted. <laughs> Is it cold? Yeah, so nice. Yay! Very bustling train scene. Isn't it? Yeah. We just met an interesting chap. He just left Russia because of the mobilization. He's in the he's very much in that category of special military skills. And um, he's come here to attempt to find work and not be in Russia so he doesn't get drafted. Uh, he asked us if we knew anybody in Saudi Arabia. He's, a, he's an Arabic translator and he wants to work there, so um, I think I do know somebody uh, who might be able to help. I gave him my flip-flops because the only shoes he had were his Russian military army boots and he didn't want to be seen walking around in them. He was nervous about having his picture taken because the FSB checks social media for uh, exactly this situation. Very sad to hear that that's happened to him and that he has to leave his country and uh, hopefully find him to get away to the Arabian Peninsula so you can work as an Arabic translator. Very sad. Ran out of water, so 
water on the uh, on the train. So I found some tea bags, and I've now got my noodle cup. It's now being reused. A lovely cup of Prince of Wales Twinings tea. It's the hydration station. Real, real long-term train novices in Central Asia. I've come to realize that everyone brings their own little um, metal ceramic-covered pot with their own glasses. So very well prepared. We need to get this for the next journey. Cut up, go, you all